Hey gang, today I uh, want to talk about relays, a whole bunch of different types of relays. And I've rigged up uh, a number of relays. This is all ad lib for the most part. Uh, I haven't practiced my speeching here. I've put together a little transformer. It's a 24 volt, 120 to 24 volt transformer. And uh, I have a little 3 amp fuse on it. And, uh, but I want to talk about some different relays. Uh, let's, first, I wanted to cover a little heat sequencer picture because I talked about uh, some of the heat sequencers do it differently. This, is, uh, this one is a heat sequencer, which normally stacks like that. If you're familiar with seeing this is a double stack, which means it has a, a set of contacts here for one and another set here, which run uh, separately. The heater in this one I pulled out, the bottom here. The heater's a little, uh, a little disc. This is the actual element that sits inside on the contacts, 24 volt contacts, and the little, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little concave uh, element there, so that when it heats up, it pops the other direction and cuts, uh, cuts. but anyway, uh, the the basics of it here, and I'll start out with the contactor. This is a regular contactor that you would find on uh, some heating systems, like American Standard has uh, this on some of their heat packages, or at, on the air, con air conditioner on the condenser outside. One side is always hot, top to bottom. You can see it just has a steel piece going through it. And the other side actually has the contactor there. So normally open, this is a normally open piece here. In my meter, I can connect on one side to the other and I have nothing. Put my voltage on it here, one side, 24 volts. And the other side, you hear it close. And now it's uh, there. This always is on the other side regardless. Pull that off. Uh, here's a couple of other types of, of relays. They do the same job, even though they look completely different. This one is a uh, single pole double throw, meaning it has a single pole in there. But depending on which way you have it energized or not, which side of the uh, contact actually has the uh, ability to flow voltage across. This one is normally closed on this side, on the back side, and normally open on this side. So, and this is, you'll find typically a lot of times in a system that has a heat sequencer to run the fan on low speed. You'll have voltage coming in here, going out through here on the normally closed of the heat sequencer for low speed or medium. And then on the high speed, if you kick the fan in, they would switch it over to this side, eliminating the possible uh, chance of turning on the, uh, the fan medium or low and immediately cut it on high there. Energize it and it closes, I mean opens up on this side. It's now closed on that side. So that's kind of, uh, kind of neat. They have this version. I have another one over here. Um, here's another one. Same thing. Um, normally closed on this side and normally open on this side and they're independent of each other. Um, you apply voltage to, let's just put some jumpers on here. And I'll connect that to my, my meter over here. Put voltage on, on that. You can hear the relay click. And it switches over to the other set. So we now, nothing there. You see, I'm jumping from uh, from front to back, and there's there's no nothing. They're just completely separate. But switched over. Now this set is hot. This is handy. Um, sometimes you can use these to replace one of these. And you're thinking, okay. I remember the first time I had to do that. It, 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 <laughs> Didn't occur to me right away, but you see, this is just a solid tab. It's both, uh, both. Full. This is probably, but they just put a single tab on the outside, so they don't have to change their manufacturing. I've never busted one open to double check it, but, but if I had to guess, so you can actually put a jumper from here to here, a wire jumper from here to here, with a double tab and and just put a single feed, and it'll it'll give you hot to either one depending on how you actuate it. Now we uh, come to a larger one, and this is it's a little heavier duty, and this has two sets of poles, normally open and normally closed. Uh, you have the coils. This has a double set of coils over here. I'm just going to show, uh, yeah. so you can have multiple wires on your coil side. And the coil side, you'll notice, is lower than the rest of the, the thing here. Um, and you have a normally open and no normally closed on here. 
get to flip it over so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, this is your normally closed and normally open. And they've got a little hard plastic dividing it. And the same thing here. Same on the other side there. So I can uh, I can put my connectors on here. Let's see. Hook it up here and here. Slide this on my coil here. Here, you heard it click audibly. And now this is open, but this one's closed. Same thing here. That's now open, and now that one's closed. Pull it off and it's reversed. Very simple, and uh, once you get used to the different looking relays, even though it, uh, it's confusing at first, you can replace one type of relay with another. As long as the amp, the amperage and the voltage rating is at least equal or greater than. So that's not that big of a deal. Uh, and sometimes um, you have to watch the coil ratings, but typically, typically, as long as you don't have too many objects pulling the 24 volt, uh, 24 volts down, you're not, you're all right. Now we come to the sequencers. Now these are always fun. I hate sequencers. I'm sure you've heard me say that 40 or 50 times. These are always normally open, always. Uh, I've never seen any. This, this could be heat sequencer or fan sequencer. Sometimes you can interchange the two, but but uh, normally open here. So. I'm just going to, and these particular ones you'll see, uh, this is a two-plater job, and they have a piece of wire on the top and the bottom. The coils are on the bottom, so you can hook up one wire here and one wire here on the coil, and it automatically fires up the back set. So just for testing purposes here, I'm going to hook up, uh, hook this one up here, and now this is a 1 to 110 second on and 1 to 110 second off. So both of these are the same. It takes 110 seconds, up to 110 seconds to heat up, probably 30, and X amount to cool back down. So we're going to have a little fun here and see how long it actually takes before I run out of taping time here. One on here, and the second one on here. Whoop, I popped the fuse because I had my head up my ass, and I tried to hook up both on the same side, <laughs> which directly shorted it out. So let me go get a fuse. Perfectly good. Another reason there that uh, to have a three amp fuse or a five amp fuse in line, so you don't blow your transformer. Learn that the hard way too. So dead fuse, replace the fuse. And we all got a lesson, and I look like a boob. <laughs> Let's turn this around here. Hook it up on the right side. Now some of y'all said, Mike, don't do that before I actually did it. So hook that on there. Now we wait. I should go get a cup of coffee or something while we waited. <coughs> I guess it could take up to 110 seconds since it's actually heating up too. We'll just hang out here and I guess I could read a book or uh, bitch about Goodman units. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> so we have a hot there, hot here. Uh, good all the way through on that one, and good all the way through on that one. And uh, now I've pulled that off. We're waiting for the cool down now, which could have been, like it says on the, the data plate here, anywhere from 1 to 110 seconds. There you go. And that is just a sampling of relays and some basic functionality. Hopefully you got some use out of this and uh, thanks for watching.